Hello. Today, or this week's project, um, is based around the idea of a self-portrait, but um, I'm keen that you don't find that you've got to get hung up on depicting yourself with some profound psychological insight, rather that you use yourself as the model for an interesting setup, something unusual. So I've sent you the images of, um, by the Israeli artist Avigdor Arika, who did a lot of self-portraits, and I hope you'll agree the ones that I sent you are amazingly inventive, different angles, different viewpoints, he's dressed up, he's using different sorts of lighting. So probably this morning, Monday morning, you might spend most of your time just trying out some different possibilities to see if you can actually see yourself in an interesting way and manage to draw. So I'll just illustrate that a little bit. So I'm here with a mirror on the floor. It's not that easy to demonstrate these things because getting you to see what I'm seeing. But I put a mirror on the floor. That's right, okay. I'm looking down into the mirror with my drawing board here and uh, I've tried to choose well, actually, what I've done is I've worked out that it, it's an unusual angle. That's part of the point. But what I'm trying to get you to discover are some interesting unusual angles, but things that can still make sense. So I've found that if I include the underneath of the chair, for example, then it makes a bit more sense of my leg going across the drawing. I'll show you that. That's, that's what I'm drawing. Uh, and it's meant to be unusual. It's an odd angle, but as I say, if it can make sense, that might be one of your aims. But in this drawing, my head, my self-portrait, is quite a small element. So I hope that's a good example. We're now going to leave this room. I'll pause this while we go into another room and try something else. So in here... I put out all the lights, I've got a mirror up on the chest of drawers, and I've got one spotlight. So I'm, again, I'm really looking at what uh, Avigdor Arika has done in those examples that I sent you. Um, I was playing around just with looking, coming a bit closer, and going further away. But that's quite good for using the pattern of light and shadow really to make my in a way make my face disappear or to make some of the detail some of the de definition detail uh, some of the de definition disappear this is the sort of setup where it might be worth actually doing a charcoal rub away drawing and making most of my background dark but also then deciding what else to include. I can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but we've got a picture on the far wall up there, just very faintly in the dark. And then in my mirror, and I, again, I'm taking a leaf out of Eureka's book. I'm going to include my drawing board. Then I also want to include this table lamp, which together with my lit face is probably going to be the lightest part of the drawing. I'm ignoring the camera. So that's another possibility. Again, you know, what's, what's consistent with what I've been, been saying already is the idea of using yourself as the model for an interesting self-portrait. But if you can lose yourself to quite a degree and produce a drawing which is interesting, intriguing, but still makes enough sense. I think that's one of the challenges. So what I'm illustrating here you know, well you can see that, is really using light 
I've drawn the blinds, closed the curtains and put on a spotlight so that the portrait I'm going to draw is one of a subject lost, lost in the dark with just the light catching a few interesting things. So we've got the spotlight, we've got some light on me, got some light on the edge of the board and then we've got just a, a pot of something there. So that's another illustration of something you can do, play around with the light and in the case of what I'm doing, produce something that's very tonal. Okay, that's that one. So pause again, let's go to another room. So in this room, and you're getting a, a tour of my house, there is a sweet little mirror up in the bookcase. And if I have to get back a bit here, I can just see myself and I've just been doing a drawing. See that there? Where my head, my self-portrait is pretty small and it's there among the books. And what I also quite like about the possibility here is not just the little mirror in among the books, an unusual self-portrait, but also there's a bit of a view out the window. So as well as losing the self-portrait in the books, I could even add, well, confusion or you know, some more distraction um, by putting in something of the green colors of out the outdoors. So that's another possibility. Okay, so don't say that I don't suffer for your art. Here I am in disguise. I think I'm looking like I'm disguised as the naked civil servant. But with some obscuring costume and some interesting light, I'm trying another possibility for an interesting self-portrait where there will be some mystery and some interest in the setup. So I've got a sort of shaded face on one side, lots of dark clothing around. And now I'm in the bathroom, so maybe is this, am I going to do something with the bathroom? That's another possibility. So that's what I'm doing. So with all of these, I'm going to show you the whole set and say a few more things. But really the challenge, which I have been repeating, is to produce an interesting self-portrait. But there's also going to be practical considerations. And I suspect that you might find it works best to produce a drawing. I'm doing all my drawings in charcoal here. A thick piece of charcoal and I'm being fairly loose about them because I'm still trying to decide what I like, what I don't like. So I think you should work, work things out in a drawing and then possibly come to the conclusion that if you paint or work in colour, work in a mixed media, you'll start your painting from your drawings. So some of these things that I've been demonstrating, unusual angles, um, interesting lighting, you sometimes find once you get the paints out, 
it's very difficult to to work. You can't see because the light's odd, or you can't see because of the angles. So again, it would be a really useful exercise in working from your drawings. So drawings are a bit easier to produce. They might just be monochrome, but if their aim is to help you find something interesting and worth pursuing, then you can work from your drawings to, to, a, to a certain stage. So pause you again. So I just thought I'd say something about my four drawings, um, how I would proceed with them and what I, what I think of them. So I'm recommending that Monday morning uh, you possibly get as far as this, but I don't think you should feel you need to go any further. I think what Monday morning should be about is trying to work out practically and by producing one or two drawings, maybe these are too big, these are A4, perhaps if I'd done them smaller it would have been quicker. I worked with charcoal on white paper and I did very loose drawings, so they're nice and quick and that gives me a chance to, to reflect on them. So if you can get to this stage by the end of Monday morning, that'd be great, possibly even to make up your mind. So this is the one where I was looking down with the mirror on the floor, and so I've drawn the underneath of the chair, my leg goes across the drawing. In this one and in a few of the others, I've included the drawing board. I think that might help. I keep stressing this thing. I think the point that you could be aiming for is an interesting composition. It's a self-portrait, it's based on you are the model, but in most cases the heads are small, they're sometimes obscured, so don't worry about getting a likeness. You're just using yourself as a model to do an interesting self-portrait. And so interest is one element, but also you want to work out how, how it can make sense. So that's why I've, that, that, that spiel was all to do with the fact that looking underneath the chair, I think helps explain the leg. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, I'd have to see what you think. But that's the sort of thing you might be looking for. Are, are there extra elements that make sense of this unusual angle? I mean, I think what this has going for it is it's a great sort of design, this big dark shape going across the picture and... It is an unusual perspective, which is helped by me using the, the legs of the chair converging a bit. That's that one. This is the one in the darkened room with just a light. I really like doing tonal things and it's nice and dramatic. I've got a light source here and I've got light on parts of my face. I think what I would do to add to this is put something else in there. I've mentioned the picture in the background and there, there was a something on, on the surface catching the light but I think it'd be nice to have a few more things um, and I'm not sure about the drawing board um, you know I'd change some of that around a bit I think it'd be quite nice to have a lot more things catching light um, to compete in a way with with that head because again I don't want to be obliged to do too much to that head it would be much nice if it was much more about light this is the one with the bookcase which for some reason I really like I like the shape of the mirror. There's something maybe slightly natural about that, that you sometimes walk into a room and you might, if there's a mirror, you might catch sight of yourself, but if there's a kind of glimpse of a person there and there's plenty of scope to make the books busy, a busy pattern, colourful, a view out of the window, quite like that. And then there's the one um, hiding behind clothing, which actually it's a bit... It's a bit boring at the moment. Um, it would be quite nice to have been more adventurous with the clothing. I think actually when I, when I saw how little of my face was lit in the bathroom mirror, I quite liked that. Um, so maybe that's something I should work with more. I mean, for example, if I made it a slightly smaller uh, arrangement, so that there was just a little bit of face catching the light and quite a lot of dark stuff 
happening with the hat and the, the top. So that, again, that's just trying to sort of think aloud about how you might start with a setup and then, without necessarily doing a brand new one, see is there some way of getting the best out of, out of it. So um, that's probably all I need to say to you for now. Um, I have got to think about this now, as you will, and we can discuss them, uh, your, your um, setups, different lighting, different angles, see what's possible. And as I say, there are plenty of kind of practical challenges. And if I were to go on with any of these, I'd be tempted by the mirror, the, the mirror in the bookcase or maybe this one. I think I would start a painting from the drawing. And then I would go and get the extra information that I needed. Um, with, with the bookcase one, it would be relatively straightforward. The bookcase is there. I could paint, I could take my paints into that room and paint the bookcase and paint the view out the window and then see what I had to do to my own reflection. Um, here, I think I would probably do a bit more drawing. I would maybe take some pastels and develop that drawing a little bit more and generally work from the drawing. This one, I don't know, because I don't know what it's like. I think I'm, I think it would be possible to paint that one. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm just trying to give you um, some thoughts about how you could go from these drawings and I think it's a really useful thing to be good at drawing, uh, at painting from your drawings. So maybe that's the general advice with these. Once you've identified one that you think you'd like to paint, don't paint it too big. Uh, if you keep it A4, maybe A3, then you won't be able to do eyelashes and fingernails and things. You'll have to keep your self-portrait small and loose. And that is a more valuable outcome of this exercise, that you'll be thinking much more about how the whole painting works. And that's, that's what I'm encouraging you to do here. So have some fun, because it will be fun and games, and we'll, um, we'll discuss that at one o'clock today. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.